Welcome to AI Arthritis Voices 360. This is the official talk show for the International Foundation for Autoimmune and Autoinflammatory Arthritis, or AI Arthritis for short. My name is Layla P.L. Valete, and I am the Health Education Manager here at the organization and person living with lupus and Sjogren's disease. And I am so excited to talk to you today about World Autoimmune and Autoinflammatory Arthritis Day, which is on May 20th. And so I'm going to be talking to you today about all of our plans that we have for this year, as well as we will be having some flashback clips talking about awareness, why we have World AI Arthritis Day, and why it's so important to drive awareness for these diseases. So I really hope that you enjoy and that you are excited for all of the activities that we have planned. And yeah, alrighty. So basically, the first thing that I'll be talking about is the plans that we have for social media. So World AI Arthritis Day started as a movement on social media. And so social media always remains a big part of what we do for each day. So we have a few different things going on on social media to celebrate the day and help bring awareness. Um, so just as a pre, <clears throat> just as a preface, uh, World AI Arthritis Day is on May 20th, but as it passes through all of the different time zones in the world. So it actually starts on May 19th at 6 a.m. Eastern time and ends on May 21st at 5 a.m. Eastern. And so it's a straight 47 hours of bringing awareness. And that's where the majority of the uh, social media part of the event will happen. And so we have uh, one, our auto plus inflammatory arthritis equals X campaign, which is pretty much a way to help expedite early diagnosis, early detection, and early treatment for our AI arthritis diseases. And so Basically, we want to show that auto symptoms plus inflammatory arthritis symptoms equals all of our different diseases. So we have a poster campaign. Um, we also have graphics that you can post on Instagram or other social medias. And we also have three different video trends that we're going to be getting people to do examples of and basically helping to tell their story. Um, so the poster campaign, um, I actually have posters here. If you're on the YouTube version, you can see one of my posters and you take a picture with holding up the posters that have to do with your specific symptoms of your AI arthritis disease. Um, you can also do that on the graphics posts for Instagram. If you don't want to hold the poster and just want to post it, um, post the information on your Instagram or other social medias, then you can do that. And we also have three different video trends that we are um, relating to AI arthritis diseases. So the first one is the put a finger down challenge. Um, so where you would say, put a finger down if you have experienced such and such. And so basically trying to pull experiences that unite all the different AI arthritis diseases um, or the people having those diseases and having common experiences. And so the second trend is going to be the I have an AI arthritis disease, of course, which is just another vehicle to be able to bring awareness to the different experiences that we all have in um, our day-to-day -day lives. So um, I would say, I'm an AI, I have an AI arthritis disease. Of course, I have to go to the specialist every three months and get my blood drawn every three months. Things like that, um, which are basic um, things that we have to do as patients with chronic illnesses, but people may not know that um, that's how often we have to go and things like that. And the last video trend is going to be basically a pointing trend. So you would point to your left side, point to your right side, and those are going to show up as your auto symptoms and your inflammatory arthritis symptoms. So yeah, those are the three different um, trends that, or the, the three different videos that we have and all of the different components of our auto plus inflammatory arthritis equals X campaign. Um, you can find all the different information on um, our website and we will have the link here um, in the description and also um, on any of the different um, sites that you're going to be listening to this. So we will make sure to have the um, all the links for all of the inf information that I'm giving here um, for you to be able to participate. So 
yes, that is our first thing that we will be having. Um, for social media, we also have um, patient org participation where we have a race car. Um, I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but World Autoimmune and Autoinflammatory Arthritis Day has an auto theme, as in cars, raceways, um, the under the hood, all the different things. Um, we use basically a car or um, an automobile to compare our diseases um, and our body to diseases. So, um, you know, a car may look completely fine on the outside, on the body, Body. But once you take a look under the hood, you could have a completely not working engine. You can have all these different things wrong with your uh, vehicle. So that's kind of uh, an example or a, a metaphor for invisible diseases. Um, so yeah, we focus a lot on the auto theme as if you're on the video version, you can see that my Zoom background is actually a, a raceway. So yeah, we use the auto theme just to kind of catch attention and to use it to get um, the point across of basically what invisible disease is, what AI arthritis is, diseases are and what the difference between osteoarthritis and AI arthritis diseases are. So um, that's those are the main points that we uh, try to get through for this awareness day. Um, but yeah, so we have patient organizations who are participating. We provide them with a car and we put them all on a poster in order for um, us to show the different patient organizations that represent the different diseases that have participated. But we also um, have a social media kit with different... Um, graphics and awareness posts and captions that we provide to those patient organizations to be able to post on their own social medias um, for the day of awareness. So those are the different social media components that we have. And the next thing that we have going on is our race-a-thon. So this is going to be our second annual race-a-thon. And a race-a-thon is basically um, our auto theme combined with a, a traditional telethon. If you've ever remember seeing those on TV back in the day, um, where basically with the telethon, there will be a TV show that has a different has different events going on, and you there's a number on the screen, and you call the number to donate. Um, so that is kind of what the raceathon is doing. We're promoting awareness and education about our diseases, but as well, we are using it as a fundraiser for um, AI arthritis, but also the other participating patient organizations. Basically, on the raceathon, we will have different um, segments that may show what everyday life is like for people with our diseases. Um, there may be different resources that are shared during that um, race-a-thon for people to be able to increase their quality of life having our diseases. There's going to be information about exercise, self-care, and all of those amazing topics that um, can be covered for all the different AI arthritis diseases. And as well, uh, with the Raceathon race will come a resource library um, that we get basically up to three resources from our participating patient organizations, and we are going to share them with the um, general public to be able to have a resource library for all of the different resources from uh, the participating organizations. So we are so excited to spread the wealth, share the knowledge, and um, provide the AI arthritis community um, and those outside of the AI arthritis AI arthritis community or may not know that they are a part of the community yet um, with all of the amazing different resources that these patient organizations have worked so hard on. So we are excited to share all of the resources as well. And last but not least, we have our fundraiser that we are holding. And our fundraiser is going to be held on the website called Give Butter. And Give Butter is um, basically a very user-friendly, easy way for you to be able to donate. We have um, text to donate. We have a QR code that you'll be able to donate with. And we have just a regular basic page. Um, we just have a... And, we also have a page for you to go and click on. You can read what um, World Autoimmune Autoinflammatory Arthritis Day is all about, what the race a is about, what we will be using the money for, um, and 
all of those amazing things. Uh, what's also very cool is that there um, is a team aspect. So we have different AI arthritis staff members and volunteers that have their own page that tell their own story of why they are connected to AI arthritis and why they would love to raise awareness for these diseases. So um, it adds that personal aspect um, to be able to support the volunteers and the staff members who are trying to raise money for this amazing organization. So yes, I am so excited for you all to see all of the different Give Butter pages. And it's going to be an amazing way to um, to spread awareness still, but also be able to raise money for our organization. So we are very excited about that. And again, I just wanted to emphasize that this is for our or organization's fundraiser, but there will be other patient organizations that are raising funds and that you can also donate to. So um, that's also something to keep in mind. So yes, the best way for you to see what we're up to leading up to race day would be to follow our World AI Arthritis Day social media um, on Facebook and Twitter, it's going to be at AI Arthritis Day. And on Instagram, it's going to be at World AI Arthritis Day. And I will make sure again to have all of those links in the description, as well as the Give Butter link for our fundraiser. And um, I did forget to mention what time and what date our raceathon is going to happen on. So our raceathon is going to be on Sunday, May 19th, and that's going to be starting at 11 o'clock. Eastern time. And then it's going to end eight hours after that. I believe that's seven. Yeah. Seven o'clock um, Eastern time. So it's going to go from 11 to seven Eastern time on May 19th. We will have that live stream video ready for playback by um, the next day so that we can also replay it on May 20th, the actual day in the United States for um, World AI Arthritis Day. And yes, so that's going to be held on Facebook, um, on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash AI Arthritis Day. So I really hope that you will tune in and check out what all of the different uh, resources and segments that we have on that live stream. So alrighty, so that is what we have for World AI Arthritis Day 2024. You are still going to be hearing after this a few more clips about the importance of raising awareness for AI arthritis diseases and why we have this day. So so thank you so much again, and yeah, stay tuned for the clips. Oh yeah, you heard it. It's revving some engines. Because we are going to talk about World Autoimmune and Autoinflammatory Arthritis Day, World AI Arthritis Day for short. And that is an annual event that happens on May 20th every year. It was established by International Foundation for Autoimmune and Autoinflammatory Arthritis in 2012. And historically, we have hosted this event online. It reaches about 60 countries around the world. And we usually have about three to four dozen nonprofits, our nonprofit awareness teams that sign up to help us along the way because together we are stronger, right? Right. So this year is going to be a little bit different. And that's why we wanted to take this opportunity to share this with you all because we know that you care about this cause and wanted to learn more about how you could get involved. So as we said, the event is uh, historically conducted online. We have social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram which are at AI Arthritis Day. And you can make sure that you like those so that you're all ready. During that time, we focus on awareness and education to help the public and some practitioners like maybe primary care physicians, hospitals, nurses. We try to teach people more about our diseases and in particular, the type of arthritis, the autoimmune type of arthritis that's associated with it, hence differentiating it from the more common type of arthritis or osteoarthritis. So we use that word auto. Uh, you see where I'm going? Why are the car was revving in the beginning? So we use the word auto and play on that to make sure that people understand that our type of diseases and the arthritis associated with it, whether that is an autoimmune or an autoinflammatory diseases, 
just those couple dozen that have the arthritic component are all very similar, also have some unique features. But the point is, this is our day to teach the world about these diseases. We also choose auto or automobiles or auto racing theme because our diseases are full body and the auto body and the race for awareness. So see how that all ties in together. And we focus on making sure that it is clear that our diseases affect all types of people in all parts of our body, including joints, tissues, and organs. And really, the awareness is necessary to improve the lives of the 450 million people worldwide that are affected with these diseases. We hope that our race to awareness and education will educate the public, but also by doing that will lead to earlier detection, referrals, and diagnosis, in addition to addressing those misunderstandings associated with these diseases. So the topic, well, we're going to go back because it is May and we're going to talk about the word arthritis. And we have visited this on the table quite a few times since we started the show in late 2019. And we choose May to revisit because in the United States, it's Arthritis Awareness Month and in some other countries too. I'm not sure, Eileen, I don't believe it is in Canada. I think it's a different month. It is September for Canada, but I do celebrate as well because you're our neighbors. That's right. (laughs) And then also it is World Autoimmune Autoinflammatory Arthritis Day or World AI Arthritis Day, May 20th, which our organization established way back in 2012 as one of the first programs we ever did. And that day is used to celebrate the differentiation of our arthritis from other arthritises and really bring awareness and education to our community. So in honor of that, we are putting it back on the table. And when I say back on the table, that means it is called a step five. So for those of you who have tuned in our show for a while, you will know that we, in addition to these 360s, we have two versions really of this main show. It's a step two, which means we've identified by listening to patients, there's a big issue in step one of our process. We put it on the table in step two. So we've done that. We'll link you to all of those episodes so that you can check some of those out. We're going to revisit those topics and move forward in a larger conversation about it and a conversation that can lead all the way to what we call step six in our process, and that is resources or solving the problem in some way. So we're going to do all of that. We are amazing. We're going to do all of that in 45 minutes. Holy cow. All right. So... I'm going to turn this over to some of our co-hosts here to start the conversation. And the first thing I thought we'd do by just throwing this on the table and revisiting it is just talking about why you think that awareness about our kind of arthritis, autoimmune arthritis, autoinflammatory arthritis, the type of arthritis associated with these auto diseases, why is education and awareness so important? I think it's important because when I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis at 29, I was so shocked that what I was experiencing was even arthritis. I actually made my rheumatologist test me for everything other than RA because I was like, this doesn't make sense. I thought arthritis was just joint pain. So I actually fell victim to the misconceptions of arthritis. And so I think the awareness and the education about there to everyone not only helps people understand that arthritis is a serious disease, but also help them recognize the symptoms so that they start treatment earlier because diseases have better outcomes when treated earliest. And like Eileen said, I was diagnosed three years later than planned. So I was having weird symptoms, chronic fatigue, joint pain. And I was in high school at the time. So doctors were like, oh, you're just an active teen. You have growing pains, stuff like that. But, you know, even with uh, my dad having psoriasis, there wasn't anyone in my family or friend group who had any form of arthritis. So even with the knowledge of having a family member with an autoimmune disease, it wasn't really looked upon that I would have arthritis at 18. So, you know, when I went to see my pediatrician, she was like, oh, you're fine. But I kept kind of egging her on. Like I basically went on Google and did what you're not supposed to do and 
pretty much self-diagnosed myself. And then I went back two years later and I was like, you know, my hands look a little different and it was more something that I could notice. And she was like, yeah, you should go see someone. And ironically, her sister happened to be a rheumatologist, but throughout those two years, I was complaining to her. She didn't find it necessary for me to go even seek an opinion. So we just kind of, you know, left the doctor's office, like everything's fine, you know, so, but it really wasn't. And that's kind of why I feel that it's important to discuss these things because there's a lot of people out there, even with social media and a bunch of like awareness, there are people out there who do not have the answer still, even with modern technology and everything that we have going on. So that's why it's important to sort of talk about these things. And I would just jump off of that with after all of this time and all of this still not having the answers. I mean, that really is just the biggest and most important part of all of this, because the the answers to figuring out what it is that's going on with us when we are feeling pain, not only in our joints, but in all these other places that really don't make a whole lot of sense, but also so many other symptoms that affect so many other parts of our bodies in trying to figure out what it is that's going on and trying to figure out what's wrong. It's so important both for the actual tangible physical medical diagnosis and treatment, but also in how we are perceived and understood by the people around us. And that's the people in our families. That's the people that we work with. That's just general society and kind of how they look at us with arthritis, with disabilities and and all of that. And the more we can raise awareness, the more we can talk about what this is and what it means, the closer we get to that kind of understanding. I was going to add to that kind of more like the general public awareness part of it, the way we talk about it too, because a lot of the times we kind of even ourselves just describe it as arthritis. But when you say rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis, or you give it a different name or more of a name, then people are like, oh, that's not just arthritis. That is something else. And then on the day when we start talking about them, you know, more people are like, oh, I've I've heard of that. I don't really know what that is. So it's the day to learn what this is and understand more about it. And then hopefully people having those weird symptoms, having those unexplained, no diagnosis, know what to ask for, know what to look into, know, you know, what these things actually are. And then hopefully the entire disease group gets more respect and more acknowledgement for what they actually mean to live with them. Wow. You all just had really, really great examples. I have nothing else to add show over, but seriously, what you all really explained very poetically almost was a journey in you went from detection and diagnosis issues to what's going on with me to misunderstandings, which we're going to circle back on as well, to public education. We sort of touched on doctor education because that all rolls into it. And we will then lead into also talking today on this overlap, which we said in our introductions, is then you have this issue of, well, Is the arthritis being ignored? Is it being ignored because the doctor doesn't think I have it? Am I too young? Is it being ignored because it's not typically associated with my disease? There's just a lot that goes around the arthritic component that if we understood it, we, meaning family members, meaning doctors, meaning the public, we could really start to see better detection, better diagnosis, earlier treatment, better quality of life. It all equals into this equation just on this word. And then it even equals into better overall health care, regardless of where you live, with regardless of what country and better outcomes for the healthcare system. Because if we're being treated early and we have better outcomes, then we have less chance of having comorbidities from uncontrolled inflammation. So those are all really, really good points and lead us up right into the heart of this conversation. That we like to call at the table. My name is Tiffany. I will be your host and welcome to the table. Pull up a seat and join the conversation. So what is a mini episode, you may ask? Well, these are short versions of our podcast that we air every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. 
and they address issues that we've identified either require immediate action or there's something that we are already working on and we want your input to help develop resources to then put back in our community so together we can change the stories of tomorrow. So the topic we're going to talk about today is the need to differentiate arthritis types. And why is this important? We believe doing so will improve the misunderstandings that are associated with this disease and in turn will help expedite detection of the autoimmune and autoinflammatory diseases where arthritis is a major component. We also think that by addressing this and creating educational materials, that it can help the conflicts and relationships that currently exist because of these misunderstandings of what a person really is dealing with. And then eventually, both of these things will improve a person's quality of life. It can improve their health outcomes. And then if that happens, well, we could actually start to improve the overall cost of health care around the world. And wouldn't that be fantastic? So let's get down to the conversation here. Why do we want to do this? And what are we trying to achieve? At the root of the problem is that over many, many decades, the word arthritis has only been associated as an umbrella term, meaning joint inflammation or joint pain. And that's what it is. But the problem is that there are different types of arthritis. And if the general public only assumes that arthritis is something that is a part of aging or happens in a mild form. Oh, it's just something that I can take an over-the-counter product and I'll feel better. That is doing a disservice for the people who really are suffering with the various types of arthritis, whether that be the more popular osteoarthritis or our types, which is the arthritis associated with having an autoimmune or an autoinflammatory disease, we like to call AI arthritis. So the fact of the matter is we all have points of reference. We know what we know. So if we think of the word arthritis, what comes to mind? I mean, you might say, hey, I I have arthritis. I have it in my knee or I got it from an injury. That can happen really at any age. Or maybe you have the typical aging that just happens naturally. And all of that falls under degenerative arthritis, which is osteoarthritis or the most common form of arthritis. And even with saying some of those things that I just mentioned, it does come with this assumption that it is a minor situation, a minor inconvenience that might not be that painful. But the fact of the matter is, even within that type of arthritis, it can be extremely serious to the point where the cartilage has worn away and it is bone to bone. And that, of course, is extremely painful. So even in osteoarthritis, I want to make it really clear By differentiating, we are not in any way, shape, or form suggesting that one form is worse than the other. They all have variations of severity. But the reason we want to start differentiating in our arthritis types stems from the misunderstanding of the word. So the first issue is relationship conflict. So think back to a situation that you were misunderstood. And it's frustrating, right? You say, oh, no, you have to understand. And you jump up and down. Well, maybe, I don't know. Depends on how how angry you are, I guess. (laughs) But it's frustrating. But you get over it, right? The next day, everything is okay. Well, what if that happened every day or close to every day? Because that's the reality for people living with AI arthritis diseases. People say, oh, I'm so sick of people thinking that my arthritis is this mild form and I'm too young to have this. I mean, there's just so many things that occur with the frustration surrounding being misunderstood in general. But then it's deeper than that because the other thing that's different about our arthritis type is that these are part of an autoimmune or an autoinflammatory disease. There are over a hundred of those, but only a handful actually present with most patients with arthritis as an early clinical component. And that's important to note because this happens at a cellular level and the inflammation travels through the bloodstream and it'll attack the joints, tissues, organs, full body. And the pain that's felt is from initial onset. So as soon as that cellular level activity in the immune system starts to interact, we're feeling that pain. Now, it's going to take months and often years before any damage 
occurs, that anything could be seen on a radiographic image. So what happens is this invisibility combined with young onset, mind you, 20 to 40 years of age, typical of onset in adults, and then you're looking at any age in children. So you've got invisible. It's not showing anything on radiographic images. All must be in your head. You're too young to have this. So that in itself not only causes conflicts in relationships and misunderstandings and what a person is experiencing, but it lends into point number two. And that is that if general practitioners, family doctors, hospitals, nurses, kind of our first line intervention people don't understand that there is a difference, it can extremely delay detection. And when you delay detection, you delay diagnosis. You delay therapy, and then a person could have a compromised quality of life, less chance for remission, and that's when the healthcare costs really soar. So you can see how understanding the differences can really change the paradigm of many facets of our healthcare system, as well as the people living with these diseases. I know when I was first going to doctors to seek out advice on what was happening with me, I had a typical autoimmune features, which was fatigue. I had a fever for four and a half weeks straight that wouldn't break. I was exhausted. I was very short of breath and winded feeling like I had the flu. And that's what was focused on, the systemic, the full body things. And everybody kept ignoring the arthritis. We thought at IFAA when we founded the organization, wow, if we just focus on this small group of diseases and we can educate practitioners, if somebody shows up with these symptoms that are classic autoimmune or auto-inflammatory and they have arthritis, wow, could we expedite detection and, and put that whole motion forward. So the things that we are asking for your help on would be your ideas on how we can create better educational materials to educate not only our family and our peers and our significant others, but also medical practitioners and the public. Because think about it. If anybody listening has one of these diseases, before you became affected, you were the public. So if you as the public knew about this type of arthritis, maybe you would have gone to a doctor earlier. So it all really feeds off of each other. So don't forget to visit our podcast page at AI Arthritis dot org backslash podcast, where you can meet some of our future co-hosts, meet our production team, learn more about this podcast and what we're trying to achieve. And of course, we're always looking for your support. So learn about ways that you can donate and support our podcast to keep this alive. We appreciate it to all our existing VIPs who support us monthly and make things like this happen. So thank you for joining the conversation today. Pull up a seat and let's start talking. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to episode 97 of the AI Arthritis Voices 360 podcast. Um, You can check the links below to see all the ways that you can get involved in World AI Arthritis Day and where you can follow us to see what we're doing up to the race date for World AI Arthritis Day. And remember, World AI Arthritis Day is on May 20th as it passes through all time zones. Our race-a-thon will be a live stream on Facebook on May 19th, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern and ending at 7 a.m. Eastern. And we really, really hope to see you there. We also really hope to see you um, on our Give Butter page in order to help raise funds for our organization and all the other different organizations. You can check them out on their websites once the participants are announced for this year and see how you can also support their organizations. Thank you so much again for tuning in and we'll see you next time.